the next component of policy that I would like to talk about is the most obvious one. It's really probably the most important. It's budgets. How money is allocated or not to what you think it's very important from a scientific perspective or from a knowledge perspective. Uh, a friend of mine, former uh, president of the National University of Mexico, once told me, uh, you have a law that does not affect budget, that law is just demagoguery. And I think uh, I think in hindsight he's very, very right. Uh, if you don't uh, manage to, to get the public monies, the taxes, the results of, of I mean, the public's money, the public monies uh, allocated in a different way to what you think, what science thinks it's important, it, it has to be done, then hmm, it's not as, 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 uh, as powerful. Uh, uh, your success may be more partial. Um, not that you don't need to do to do things like we, I, I, I just described: uh, educate, educate uh, the judges, educate the police uh, enforcement, educate and inform well the advisors of ministers, the advisors of of congresspersons. That is very important. Um, in fact, it has to be done. If, if you want whatever you're doing to be sustainable, you have to change the education of key, key, key actors. But also, uh, the budget is, 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 is extremely important. How do you change the budget? Well, and, and there is another advantage, which I found, um, again, by personal experience in Mexico. And it may be completely different in other parts. For instance, I know that it's different in the United States. But it may not be that different in in in, in other in other uh, countries in the, in outside the Anglo-Saxon system of law, and that is that once you create a budgetary line for something, it tends to stay there. Uh, you create it, and it takes maybe five years of effort to get uh, to get uh, all the all the wheels and cogs of the of the government machinery. To, to to engage one with the other and finally you get an approval by Congress and an approval by the Ministry of the Treasury to have certain money allocated for certain purpose. For instance, monitoring of biodiversity, okay? In parks. That means that you're going to be able to to, to buy uh, the, the the cameras, the infrared cameras that allow you to track uh, mammals moving by night, and the microphones and the recorders and the software to record, say, bats and birds and other things that make noises, and you are going to be able to create a record of of the activity of this species. Fantastic, very important, extremely useful to do management of those protected areas. It took 10 years for you to get the, the government to, to approve it. But then, when it's, once it's there, it tends to stay there. So you will be able to keep doing it for a long period of time if you are uh, lucky. Again, I said, th this applies to my country. I don't know what will happen in other countries. Perhaps in other countries you need to re-approve it every year, every year. Uh, it's something that I don't know much about in, I mean, in other countries, but uh, you'll find out if you if you if you apply yourself and you do your homework. So um, being able to change this is really really very important and very effective. Um, one of the the situations in which uh, I was involved for 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 many years in Mexico was the 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 creation of a fund to um, to uh, run uh, protected areas. For years in Mexico, there was no um, uh, money for the protected areas. Protected areas could be just created in paper. Uh, by by an easy declaration that ended being a law. I mean, it was approved by Congress, but it was just 
like a polygon in a, in, in, a, in a map saying this is a protected area. No money, no budget for uh, the director or for the, or, or for the vigilance or for scientists, uh, in, in resident scientists or for signing or for radios or for nothing. So that is what you want to, to avoid. Um, uh, think, thanks to the to the very restless activity of a former minister of the environment in Mexico, and to her advisors uh, in in the in the National Protected Areas um, Agency, which at that time was a general directorate, uh, that changed in Mexico, and now there are budgets, and those budgets have been growing. Uh, now it's in the in the billions of, of pesos, which means hundreds of millions of dollars of American dollars. Um, that has signified a huge change, a huge change in the way protected areas work in the country. It took probably about 20 years to to start getting the proper f first getting the budget, the funds, and then increasing them, and then being able to to spend uh, money in the most uh, uh, in, in in things that were very important that but the government did not like to spend for instance in cars uh, to patrol the areas um, and and this uh, change was possible in no small uh, way thanks to the fact that there was a uh, combination of efforts with the private sector and with NGOs, even with uh, foreign NGOs, to do partnerships and say, okay, you will pay for the salaries of the of the director and the, the personnel of the protected area. There is going to be a fund supported by the, the private sector in which we will, and using it, we will be able to buy the vehicles or the radios or the equipment. So it, it's it's a it's a partnership. Uh, the government provides a lot of the money or most of the money, but there is a very significant component provided by the private sector, where you get um, the complementary uh, resources required to do the operations. And this has been evolving and evolving in the last 25 years in Mexico. And now we have a reasonable. Uh, budget and a reasonable uh, situation with uh, several private trust funds which are specifically allocated for supporting particular activities in particular research. This works fairly well and I would suggest that uh, it's not unique to Mexico. There are many countries where combinations of this kind of thing have happened. And um, you would like to think about this when you are thinking about um, your your uh, ceaseless efforts to change uh, science and knowledge into policy. Okay, I'm going to uh, summarize everything that I said this morning on this topic. The entire topic can be reduced to reflections about what is called or, or what is called governance. Governance is a set of institutions, stakeholders, their power relationships, their way of negotiating results, the way of achieving results that any society, any, any, any organization, any country have. It's uh, the governance of the country describes the way things are done in the public, uh, in the public arena. Um, and what we have been talking about is governance. If you, if your science, your knowledge, your your research, is capable of affecting governance, then you are changing things, and this again changes from country to country. But some of the ideas are very basic and very and very similar. Uh, you need to to understand who the actors are. You need to understand how uh, it's how um, the power relationships are, are, are dealt with and you need to understand the, the way to affect those structures and processes. In some countries, um, governance works very well. Uh, you have uh, properly and, 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 and generally accepted institutions, you have accepted um, processes and ways of doing things 
uh, your the stakeholders are serious uh, they are stable they have uh, clear and open um, aims and objectives and the entire structure works well there are even indices of this. Uh, the World Bank and other agencies, Transparency International, have calculated governance indices for most countries based uh, basically on the opinion of the people that um, the nationals of those countries and uh, the people, the foreigners that do business in a particular country. These indices are indices of uh, capacity to do to law enforcement, corruption, things like that. Uh, so um, these indices correlate um, negatively with the degree of af um, affecting the environment in the different countries. If you make a plot of governance from, from very bad governance to excellent governance and the degree at which different um, environmental indices are um, being affected or described, the worse the governments, the larger the, the the effects on the environment. So what you want to do is to be able to change the governance about uh, biodiversity or the environment based on your knowledge. And this is what this entire thing is about.